the entire team have already created an app that can be stored locally, but also syncs device to device through our local network. Now they have also made it possible to collaborate with others through our local network. So without any further delay, let's we'll see how we can set this up. So the first thing to know is that when I first install NTI, the space that we land on, as in the space that is our default space, is private by default. So we cannot share this space. This is how NTI maintains our privacy while allowing us to share what we want to share with the people we want to share them. So the sharing happens at a space level. We can designate a space as a space that we're sharing and the contents within that space will be shared with the people we want. And the other space will be private. Now the way we know which space is our default space is by seeing this entry space tag, which is just below this name of our space. If so you click this widget, you can see this share space option, which is grayed out, meaning that this space cannot be shared. If so you click on it, nothing happens. So we are going to go to another space and we'll click on this space, which I use to check out new any type features. And here, if you click this widget, we can see this share space option, which is now grayed out, meaning that this space can be shared. So if you click here, we get this generate invite link button. And if we click this button, we get a link. Now all we have to do is copy this link and share with the person who want to join us in this space. If we click this three doors right beside the link, we can delete this link, which would mean the, that this link becomes inactive, or we can turn this link into a QR code. Now I'm going to show a video made by AnyType team. Here the AnyType app is creating the link and copying the link and sharing it either through email or through messaging app or any other means. When they click this link, we will get this kind of message. If we click view request here, we'll get the option to either grant them access for viewing our content, grant them access to editing our content, or even reject their NJ into this space. Click this widget, we get this manage sharing option. And if we click here, from here, we can change the access from editor to viewer or even remove the member. Currently, we can't do too many things with this collaboration feature. Just the owner and the two other people that are part of the space. I see two other people because currently in the free version, only three people can collaborate in one space. And those three people can at most open up an object and write on that object together. Of course, the editor can also view all other sets and sections and objects. So the collaboration features are at the very rudimentary level. But the thing is that this collaboration is happening locally over our local network. This is for two accounts. If it's three accounts, then we need something for conflict resolution. And that's where Intox backup nodes come into play. I'll make a more detailed video about how these things are going to be arranged as the news becomes available. If you're already part of any type, we can go to this button where we keep all our spaces and click this gear button. And here at the end, we can see this membership option. This is the first version of any type's membership plans. If you click this, this page opens up. Currently there are three plans. One is free and the other two are paid. We can also click this button to Open up the pricing page of AnyType's website. And here are the plans. I just want to mention one thing that here we can see that beside the zero dollar, it says just your email. But I'd like to clarify this. This is not for the app. This email is just for communicating and getting notices of update. The, the app is locked by the password key that we get. And that is the only way to access our app. For all three plans, we currently can have three shared spaces. The difference is that in the free version, we can have three editors per shared space. And in both of the paid versions, we can have 10 editors per shared space and unlimited viewers per shared space. And also the paid versions provide priority support. The main difference I would say is is in the network space. 
This network space is anytime on any sync network space that we can use to sync our app across our devices. This is mainly used for media files and not for text. And of course, any type is capable of syncing device to device through our local network without any sync. And this network space in the free version is one gigabyte. And in the first paid version, which is the builder plan, it is 128 gigabyte. And in the last paid version, which is co-creator, it is 256 gigabyte. There is also an option to get a unique name of seven characters in the builder plan and in five characters in the co-creator plan. But the problem here is that if you cancel the subscription, these names will be dissolved. And though we will have a grace period of one month before they are dissolved, that raises some question with what happens to the files that are linked to this name and thus this account. But this is not clear yet. I will keep posting updates as new updates come along. If you don't want any of these plans, then we can just donate to any type for its development. Also, if we just want to increase our storage space, we do not need the multiplayer option, then we can go to this email address and ask any type team to increase our storage space and negotiate with them how we can do that and what compensations are necessary. These plans are just the beginning plans for the ones who are using the beta version of Intel and they're likely to change in the future. Even if you decide to not enter your email address, you can skip the email address entry part and still download the app. Now there is a way to recognize if a space is being shared or not. So I am here in my demo space that I have shared right now. And as you can see, before there is set private space. Now it says one member. Also, if you go to the space and click here, this the one that I'm sharing has this little arrow, which also indicates that this space is being shared. And if you click here, we can see the code, the sharing code here. And from here, we can copy this link to share with other people. We can also delete this link and turn it into the QR code. And we can access the members of the space from this point. Now here we can also delete the space and turn the QR code, copy the code, but we can also stop sharing the space altogether. To do this, we are going to click this three dots menu and stop sharing. Click stop sharing again to confirm and that three dots has disappeared and this space is no longer being shared. I'm going to also delete this link and if you notice here, right here, it now says private space. It no longer says the number of members that are part of this space. Also, if you go to this part here, the little arrow mark has disappeared. Now, all this talk about different spaces brings about an or portion of personal knowledge management system, especially the second brain concept of personal knowledge management system, which is, should we have multiple spaces or not? Though multiple spaces can help us corral different concepts into different spaces, that's allowing us to focus, but it also takes away our ability to connect these concepts just because they're in two different spaces. After all, we have one mind and our mind can create connections, although we have put the concepts in different spaces in our app. But what if we could connect concepts across spaces? And this is something also possible in any time. So let me go back to my default space and let's say I go to this media set and if I click on this option here, I get this copy link option. This will create a link for this entire set. Now let's go to another space here and I'm going to paste that link here. Now I can paste this link in three ways. Paste it as a link, paste it as a bookmark or paste it as just text. Let's see. I'm clicking here, control V to paste. I can paste as link, though it does not look so good. Let's do that again, control V, create a bookmark. And here is a bookmark. And also we can paste it as text. Now this text is just text. So clicking it does nothing. But these two, if we click, they will take us to the space that this set is part of, as well as open the set. So let's click this. And as you can see, we are back into this 
space and our set is open. Let's go back. And the same with this one. But another thing is that in case of a bookmark type object, we can click here and we can click this open as object tab. And this opens up a bookmark type object. From here, we can write a title and then we can add some of our thoughts on the set that has now become a bookmark type object. Now, another thing is that if we remember in case of bookmark type object and in this system source type relation, if we click here, we get this option to reload from source. But in this case, this will do nothing. It is not like that. If we click this, this bookmark type object will become a set. Let's click and see. And as you can see, nothing has happened. And another thing is in that, in case of this link type in red, if you click here, we get the choice to turn this link into an object. It is not that we can only do this with set. We can open up any object. And if you click this three dots menu, we'll get this copy link option. If we open up any object, any set or any collection and go to this three dots button, we can find this copy link option, which will allow us to copy the link of our object set or collection and then share it with other space. Eliminating the debate about multiple spaces because it impact. So you can connect objects in one space to objects in another space. Now that we are adding all those spaces and adding our text and media to these spaces, another question comes up. There's an important question for any app that is stored locally. That is the ability to choose our storage space because the C drive in our computer might not be the best place to house all the media and data and files that we consume nowadays. And with that in mind, AnyType has added a way to change the storage location of our AnyType contents. To do that, the first thing we have to do is log out of AnyType. For that, we're going to go to this space button, go to this gear option here and log out and logging. Now we're at the login space. All the contents of a particular account in any type is going to be called a vault. From here, of course, you can create a new vault or you can, if you click this, I have a key button. We're going to be brought into this space where we can add in our key to enter the vault. But that is not what I'm trying to show. But let's go back. And from here, we can directly open the GitHub repository for self-hosting. Now, in order to change the storage location of our app, we're going to go to this gear button here, click it. Here we get a pop-up with some options. And the last one is the storage location of our data, which is now called the vault data location. If we click this change button, it will bring up our system file explorer and we can choose or create a folder to store our AnyType data in. So I'm clicking change. And I'm just going to choose this folder that I have created to add my AnyType and select folder. Click save and this will transfer the data from our C drive to this new location. Now I'm going to open my vault that is logged into my app. Now you can see that there are very little amount of objects here. That's because it is slowly bringing in all the objects that I have created in my AnyType to the new location. The complete migration took about 20 seconds for me, which was pretty fast considering the amount of objects I have in my AnyType. And here we are. All the objects have been migrated to the new location. I hope this has been helpful to you. For more on Flutter Free Live, both online and offline, please consider subscribing. Have a good day. See you soon.